Good morning. This is Kelo Land on the Go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. The South Dakota Attorney General says Republican Senator Jessica Castleberry is cooperating with his office concerning $600,000 in COVID-19 funds. However, the status of the repayment is unknown. The AG told Castleberry she had until August 7th to pay back the funds. Last month, Governor Christy Noem and Marty Jack Lee released letters sent to the senator requesting she repay the money given to her preschool business. The South Dakota Constitution prohibits lawmakers from receiving contracts with the state or counties. Castleberry said she consulted with independent counsel before applying for COVID-19 money. A Garrettson man convicted of rape and child pornography was resentenced yesterday. Last year, Skyler White admitted to raping a 15-year-old girl who he hired to clean his home. In September, a judge sentenced him to two decades in prison. But when his attorney started the process of appealing the case, he found there's no record or transcript of White's sentencing. The courtroom where it happened didn't have a recording system or a court reporter. Tuesday, everyone returned for a second sentencing. A courthouse official tells us it's rare for something like this to happen in Minnehaha County. The search for a wanted man in the Black Hills has come to an end. The Somerset Police Department says Ambrose Williams was arrested in Lawrence County on Tuesday. He was wanted on a felony warrant out of North Dakota. The search started after a car was stopped by a Somerset police officer near I-90 and stage stop road. However, the car took off at a high speed rate of speed. Authorities say the car was found in the Piedmont area. Now let's get a check of our weather with meteorologist Scott Munn looking at a comfortable day today, Scott. We are looking at, uh, well, seasonal. Yeah, numbers in the 80s for afternoon highs. Uh, that slight chance maybe for an isolated shower, thunder shower found. Uh, first across northeastern South Dakota, maybe during the afternoon hours. We'll see if we get anything to develop and if it holds together as it moves to the southeast. Otherwise, we'll have a high around 82 in Sioux Falls, 81 Aberdeen, 85 in Pier, and 85 in Rapid City. More details on your forecast with Brian coming up. Thank you, Scott. Several brides and grooms are scrambling after tip-top tucks closed their doors without warning. One of those brides-to-be is Katie Christie of Sioux Falls. She and her fiancé are getting married in two weeks and now are scrambling to figure out what the guys will wear. So we're going to probably just end up going with jeans, nice shirt, a vest, and a tie. Kelloland News stopped by Tip Top Tux and they were closed and had a sign on the door stating they were closed for the day. We also tried calling them, but the line has been disconnected. Sioux Falls will be seeing a new state-of-the-art skate park in the next year. Construction is underway at Nelson Park as of last week. The $2.45 million park will be a first for the city. The project was brought forward by Let's Skate eight years ago. The group collaborated with the city last year to get the project moving. Going through this process with the skate park community is that they're very collaborative and creative and they activate a space. So seeing this area be more um, used, more active as a community will just help this area grow. The park will be open to the public June of next year. After more than a month of collecting supplies, the Foster Network in Sioux Falls is hosting its back-to-school event. The organization provided school supplies and a complete outfit to about 200 children last year. This week, the closet will treat up to 350 kids to a shopping spree at its new location along Cliff Avenue. Our families are amazed because um, we are not squished into a small space this year. Everything's spread out. Um, the kids even get to pick their, out their school supplies this year versus having pre-made bags of school supplies. The closet is hosting two foster families per hour by appointment only through Saturday. We provided a link with available times under this story here on Kelloland.com. And that's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Carstens. Brian? All right, weather today. Well, after some nice rain last night in Yankton, uh, almost two inches of rain, an inch 74 officially. Uh, around Vermilion, too, some nice uh, downpours. Looks like that moisture is exiting into western Iowa. Now, later today, there may be a, a couple of things on radar around Aberdeen, 
We'll kind of watch that northeastern area of South Dakota, see if we sprout anything there. Even Sioux Falls, it's possible we could see a, just a very isolated shower thunderstorm, but I don't expect it to be too widespread here. Uh, the main thinking is whatever uh, forms on radar in the northeast, That'll kind of pass uh, through and then kind of fizzle out after sunset. But perhaps we could catch a little rain up around Millbank. That sure be a good thing. We kind of had a little lower total there over the weekend rain. Most other areas have had much higher amounts. Now, what's next? Well, tomorrow we've got a little better system coming in. We've got a frontal system moving into central Ketherland during the afternoon. That should sprout a line or a broken line of thunderstorms along and uh, near the Missouri River Valley. I would say Pier could get involved with some of that. Rapid to a lesser extent, but there's some rain possibilities there in the Black Hills. But more uh, organized, certainly the farther east you live, uh, Thursday evening, there should be thunderstorms roaming around. And, of course, if you catch one of those bigger ones, absolutely you could pick up over an inch of rain, uh, given the scenario there. But it is uh, going to move along, so I think Friday morning that will move out. Now, there is some residual moisture, just a hint of this here on Friday, but I'm more inclined to kind of keep hold back the rain chance until Sunday, and that's been looking better. And even this morning, this data still is supportive of some thunderstorms in eastern Ketherland Sunday morning, and again, maybe another shot in the afternoon. We'll see how the severe weather scenario plays out. It's a little early to get specific on that, but we've got uh, quite a bit more support upstairs in the jet stream. Those upper level winds will be supportive of that. Let me show you this right here. See that low coming into Manitoba and into North Dakota? And that's going to swing right down into Minnesota. And that's what, uh, if that keeps up and that's the trend, then I think we're going to have a little more of a wound up system. It's different than last weekend, uh, but it st still has some things noteworthy there. Okay, so we'll have, a, I'm sure, more on that later today. Let's jump into your forecast now. That's seven day for Sioux Falls. We'll climb into the mid to upper 80s. Not hot, but just a, a little bit above normal there Friday, Saturday. But next week, it should cool off behind that system by Monday. Aberdeen also looking at a good chance of some rain around the region tomorrow afternoon noon or tomorrow night and then again on Sunday. That would be the next system that looks better. Pier at this point will also play into the forecast of those two chances of rain. A couple 90s could still develop around Pier. I would not say it's widespread heat, but it'll be a little hotter. And for Rapid City, mid 80s. Notice your rain chance not as high in the West. We're flipping the scripts a little bit there. Check out more details online at Kendallland.com.